What is the shortest book in the New Testament? The shortest book in the New Testament is 3 John, a brief epistle written by the Apostle John to a fellow believer named Gaius. Despite its brevity, 3 John addresses important themes related to hospitality, hospitality, and support for itinerant missionaries. The epistle commends Gaius for his faithful hospitality towards traveling missionaries and warns against the negative influence of a man named Diatrephs, who rejected John's authority and refused to show hospitality to those sent by him. 3 John provides valuable insights into the early Christian community's practice of hospitality and the challenges faced by itinerant ministers in their efforts to spread the gospel. It serves as a reminder of the importance of generosity, hospitality, and unity within the body of Christ. Who was known as the weeping prophet? Jeremiah, often referred to as the weeping prophet, is known for his poignant lamentations and sorrowful expressions of grief over the spiritual apostasy and impending judgment of Judah. The book of Jeremiah, attributed to the prophet Jeremiah, chronicles his prophetic ministry during a tumultuous period in Israel's history, marked by political upheaval, moral decay, and the impending threat of Babylonian invasion and exile. Jeremiah's prophetic calling is characterized by a profound sense of empathy, compassion, and emotional sensitivity to the sufferings of his people and the divine judgment they face. His tears and lamentations serve as a poignant reminder of the human cost of sin and rebellion against God, as well as the prophet's deep identification with the plight of his nation. Despite his anguish and despair, Jeremiah remains faithful to his prophetic vocation, proclaiming messages of warning, repentance, and hope to a wayward people. Which biblical character was swallowed by a whale? Jonah, the reluctant prophet, is famously known for his encounter with a great fish, often interpreted as a whale, after attempting to flee from God's command to preach repentance to the city of Nineveh. The book of Jonah, one of the minor prophets in the Old Testament, recounts how Jonah, upon receiving God's call, boards a ship bound for Tarshish in an attempt to escape God's presence. However, a violent storm ensues, and Jonah is thrown overboard by the ship's crew to appease the wrath of God. Miraculously, Jonah is swallowed by a great fish appointed by God, where he spends three days and nights in the belly of the fish, crying out to God in repentance and prayer. After this ordeal, the fish spits Jonah onto dry land, where he obediently fulfills his prophetic mission to Nineveh. Jonah's story serves as a powerful testament to God's sovereignty, mercy, and willingness to extend grace even to the most disobedient of individuals. What was the name of the place where Moses received the Ten Commandments? Moses received the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai, also known as Mount Horeb, a mountain of great theological significance in Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. According to the biblical narrative in the book of Exodus, chapters 19-20, Mount Sinai served as the sacred location where God entered into a covenant with the people of Israel and delivered the moral and ethical code known as the Ten Commandments. The mountain was enveloped in smoke, fire, and thunderous manifestations of God's presence as Moses ascended to its summit to receive the tablets of the law. The giving of the law on Mount Sinai symbolizes God's covenantal relationship with his chosen people, the foundational principles of righteous living, and the establishment of Israel as a holy nation set apart for God's purposes. Mount Sinai remains a potent symbol of divine revelation, holiness, and the encounter between God and humanity. Who was the first martyr of Christianity? Stephen, a devout follower of Jesus and one of the early leaders of the Christian community in Jerusalem, holds the distinction of being the first martyr of Christianity. The account of Stephen's martyrdom is recorded in the book of Acts, chapters 6-7. Stephen was chosen along with six other men to serve as a deacon, tasked with overseeing the distribution of food to widows in the early Christian community. However, Stephen's ministry extended beyond practical service to proclaiming the gospel with great boldness and conviction. His preaching aroused the opposition of religious authorities who accused him of blasphemy and false teachings. In his defense before the Sanhedrin, Stephen delivered a powerful speech recounting Israel's history and the prophetic witness to Jesus as the promised Messiah. Enraged by his words, the religious leaders stoned Stephen to death, making him the first Christian martyr. Stephen's steadfast faith, forgiveness of his persecutors, and vision of Jesus at the moment of his death left a profound impact on the early church, inspiring subsequent generations of believers to remain faithful even in the face of persecution and opposition.